devices. There are two aspects to that, our operating system as well as our hardware. Our operating system improvement came last October, late October of 2011. There were two significant improvements in that space. First is our user interface. We went from a drop-down menu system to an, our crossbar or x-axis system, which is very similar to PlayStation. Definitely an improvement as far as how you know, friendly it is. It is completely customizable. So we have, what you see is a translucent home page. You can drag and drop widgets and applications into your home page and customize it as you see fit. You can also manipulate the applications that are viewed below and move them and adjust them as you see fit. The other significant improvement came with the portal to Android Marketplace. So we went from a limited library to the same library that you can access with your Android smartphone, Android tablet, and now Google TV. There is one caveat in all of this. Under the Android platform, not all apps that are developed are optimized for all devices. So within this, uh, within the marketplace, it's been encouraging them because in October when we launched this update, there were only 30 apps that were optimized for Google TV. As it stands now, just two short months later, there are 150 plus apps that are optimized for our device. So that means the development community is responding in kind. Now to search for 150 plus apps would be rather tedious in a library of thousands. So we, we kind of streamlined that process for you. If you scroll to the bottom, we have Sony Select. Those apps are our recommended applications that are optimized for our device. So we take the guesswork out of it. So for the operating system, that update that occurred, that exists in our legacy product that's currently available on the market and will launch with our new units that will launch Q2 early summer of this year. That is it in regard to software and operating system. The significant improvement that comes with our next generation units are the control unit itself. If you're familiar with our legacy product at all, it was the white controller, very much a gaming style remote. It was polarizing to the effect that some people loved it, some people were not so happy. What we've moved towards is a more traditional home theater style remote. It's rather robust in that you have directional pad control, you now have a touch pad control as well. So scroll left, right, up, down, as well as pinching effect to expand and contract. Very similar to a laptop style experience. We continued with our QWERTY key, full QWERTY keyboard, but we also added a backlight. That was a shortcoming of our legacy unit. If you're in a dark room watching a movie in the evening, it's kind of important to have a backlight on your keyboard. What you don't see in this device is a three-axis gyro. So for gaming possibilities and applications, it's endless. I'll give you an example. Now this is a rather generic game. All I'm going to do is manipulate a small ball on a screen, but it's an example of the future and where you can go with this device. I can just, with the remote, I can move the ball all around the screen. But you get the idea. My high score is 34 next door. <laughs> so, get, there is one other bell and whistle with this device. So, the remote is consistent for both the streaming player and the Blu-ray player. However, with the Blu-ray player, you have an integrated microphone for voice command. So now, when I said that it was a robust control device, you have four means of manipulation and control for the device. Because we moved from RF with our legacy controller to Bluetooth, Say you don't like this device, that's fine. Sync your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, or a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and control the device as you see fit. So although we're not backwards compatible now, I think that sacrifice and giving the consumer greater flexibility in how they choose to control the device is there. Any questions are going to